this video, I'll introduce LibGDX animations and the Texture Packer tool. In this first segment, I'll introduce two new classes that will give us more control over the game viewpoint. The viewport will be used to control the screen size and aspect ratio, and the camera will be used to position our view within the game world. The camera to use is an orthographic camera, because we're going to look straight down on the game world, we're not going to be projecting it into 3D. By default, the orthographic camera is looking at 0, 0 in our game world, so the next time we draw Mario, he should be in the center of the screen. To make our little Mario sprite look a reasonable size, I'm going to set our screen size to 256 pixels wide and 240 pixels tall. Just for reference, our Mario is 16 pixels wide by 32 pixels tall. In the future, I might change the view screen size or some other factors. So instead of keeping those numbers there, let's put them into an info class file so that they can be easily found and modified later. I have a feeling I'm going to need more of these classes in the future for general information, so I'll create a package called Tool to keep all of these info classes, and some other classes. Another advantage of moving these numbers into this info class is that you can name the numbers, so when someone looks at them they know, ah, that's the width value, or ah, that's the height value. Before anything is drawn to the sprite batch, the sprite batch needs to be updated with the camera's current uh, viewpoint and position and so on. To do this, we'll use the set projection matrix method. Whenever the user changes the size of the view screen, then the resize method of the screen will be called and we need to update our viewport with the new dimensions of our screen. Cool, let's do a test run. Good, Mario looks bigger and he starts at the center of the screen. For the next part, I want to change the default size of the window that comes up when this game is run. I want to make that window a little bit bigger. For the first test, let's just make the window the same size as our game world in pixels. And run it to see how big that window looks. That is tiny. Okay, so the window that shows looks like it's the right aspect ratio. It's basically square, but it's much too small. We should scale it up a bit. To prevent the screen being too big, I'm going to try scaling by a factor of two. Save the files and do a test run. Okay, that looks reasonable. In this segment of the video, we'll create a Mario Sprite class and move some of the code out of the Play Screen class into the Mario Sprite class. Right now, the Mario Sprite doesn't need a lot of code to work, but we will be adding animations and some other complications later, so it's good to separate the code early. To keep things organized, I'll put the new Mario Sprite class into a sprite package. The sprite will manage its own texture, so we'll create a reference for that. And then we'll take the texture creation code from the play screen class. Create the Mario Sprite. And make a Mario Sprite constructor to create the texture. Then we need to modify how we draw the sprite. And we'll come back to the draw code in a second.
When we update the Mario sprite, we're going to be updating its position, but in the future we're also going to be animating it, so we'll need to pass it the amount of time that has passed with the delta variable. The set position code will go into the update method. And since the Mario sprite is managing its own texture, it will dispose of its own texture, but the play screen will need to dispose of the sprite, which will then dispose of the texture. Now here's the fun part. The Mario sprite is going to have all the functionality of a sprite. So we're going to be able to use a set region to set what it looks like. We're going to be able to use a set position to set its position on screen, set rotation, all that great stuff. We're also going to add disposable so that it will have its own dispose method. After creating the texture, the texture is passed to set region, which will set what is drawn when the sprite is drawn on the screen. I don't need to pass it the full picture. I could pass it part of the picture as a texture region, hence the name set region. This could be useful later, but we'll just use the full picture now. And then set bounce is called to specify where the sprite will be drawn on the screen with the get x and get y, and how big the sprite will look on the screen with the get width and get height. Let's create the sprite's update method. We'll pass it the amount of time that has elapsed since the last update and its position where it should be on the screen. We can use the functionality of the sprite class to set the position where the sprite should be drawn on the screen. It's time to test it and see if this works. Ah, good stuff. To make Mario animate, we'll need to pull some more frames from the Mario sprite sheet. So let's hop into GIMP and go get them. I'm using the middle mouse button and control mouse up to move the view around and zoom in. Once I've got it positioned well, I'll use the select tool to select the Mario frames. Copy the frame selected. Paste it as a new image. Okay, looks good. And now export that frame. To manage the animation frames, I'll create a folder. I'll call it Sprites to Pack because we're about to use a tool called Texture Packer. I'm also going to give the file a bit of a strange name, Mario underscore run underscore zero one. That last part, the underscore zero one, will be read by Texture Packer to figure out how to put animations frames together. Mario has three run sprites in total. And if you don't like these sprites, or if you just want something different, you can download a different sprite sheet and throw in your own sprites. You can draw your own sprites. You can do whatever you want. You have the power. In this segment of the video, I'll introduce the LibGDX Texture Packer tool for packing sprite frames and animations into files that are easy to use. My understanding is that there's two versions of the Texture Packer tool, one that's a command line version and one that's a easier to use GUI windowed version. So I'm going to go for the GUI version. I'll show you where to download it. I found a recent version of the tool on GitHub by Crash Invaders and it's called GDX Texture Packer GUI. And I want a stable version, so I'm getting it from the releases section. Open up the zip file downloaded. Copy the GDX Texture Packer jar file. And paste it in the downloads folder. Start fresh with a new pack file. Then give it a simple name, sprites v1. The input files are in the sprites to pack folder that we created earlier in GIMP. We'll choose the entire folder so that we get all three frames. I want to save Texture Packer's output file directly to the Kid Ridiculous Assets folder. So I'll go into Eclipse and get that Assets folder location. Paste that folder name. And pack the textures. It's finished packing the textures, and there's the output, our first three frames. In Eclipse, I'll refresh the Assets folder so we can see our new Texture Packer files. Clean up the Assets folder by deleting some files we don't need anymore. 
To load the file that Texture Packer just created, we don't have to create our own loading methods. We can use the Texture Atlas class within LibGDX. For now, only the Mario sprite will be using the Texture Atlas to get the frames for its animation. But in the future, we'll be adding a lot more custom sprites, so it's best to load the Texture Atlas in the main class, like Kid Ridiculous, and then pass the Texture Atlas to the screen, which will then pass it down as needed. Since the Texture Packer Texture Atlas relates to sprites, we can create a new class called Sprite Info and keep the file name there. Since it's an info class, we'll keep it in our tool package. Since the texture atlas will load textures into the graphic card memory, we'll also need to dispose of it to release that memory. Back to the Play Screen class, where we can go to the constructor for Mario Sprite and pass it the Atlas so that it can pull its frames from that Atlas. The single texture will be replaced with an animation which has many texture regions. Each texture region is a frame. The Sprite Atlas has one big texture and each frame is a small piece of that texture. We can load all the frames of our Mario Run animation into this animation object with one call to the Texture Atlas's Find Regions method. Since we named each of our Mario Run frames consecutively, underscore 01, underscore 02, underscore 03, the Texture Atlas will combine them all together as an animation. Besides the animation's frames from the Atlas, I'm also passing the value 0.1f, which is one tenth of a second which is how long each frame should be displayed on the screen before the next frame is shown. I'll also use the playmode.loop constant so that the animation will repeat instead of just stopping on the last frame. The sprite will begin with the first frame of the animation, which is the keyframe at time zero. Even though all frames of the animation will have the same size, I'm just using the default first frame to get this width and height. Since we've used a texture atlas to take care of all the textures for the sprite's frames, the sprite no longer has to dispose of those frames. The texture atlas will handle the disposal. And just to keep things clean, I'll move the Mario run string over into the sprite info class. Back in the Mario Sprite class, we need to create a state timer variable that will be used to keep track of how much time has passed so we know which frame of the animation is supposed to be displayed. State timer will start at zero, and each time the sprite is updated, we'll set its frame based on the current time of the state timer. Delta is the amount of time in seconds that has passed since the last update was called, so we need to add that to state timer on each update. So all the code is complete to make the Mario sprite animate. The final step is to just go back to the play screen class and remove the call to the Mario sprite dispose method since its textures are now being disposed of by the texture atlas. Let's see the final product. Alright, run Mario, run! That's the end of this video. If you like this video, you can hit the like button. If you want to know when more of these videos come out, then hit the subscribe button. In the meantime, thanks for watching.